Alright Ian, welcome back guys and girls to another Dead by Daylight tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the Hag. Here we will discuss her perks, powers and give you some tips on how to play. I have included a timestamp, it's just above, so if you wanted to go to a certain section, feel free. If you are wanting to get good with this killer, then stay tuned guys. Okay, so the Hag is from the Of Flesh and Mud DLC. I consider it to be one of the strongest killers in the game, if you use it right. The Hag relies on strategy and forward thinking, and above all else, patience. And you'll see later what I mean by patience. Her stats will indicate to you that she might not be the most mobile killer, as she has a movement speed of 4.4 meters per second, or 110%. Although she is classed as an average height killer, I would say she's more on the small side. To make up for her slow speed, she does have the slightly smaller terror radius, which is 24 meters, rather than the standard 32. So let's take a look at the Hag's perks and powers. The Hag has a few interesting perks and certainly makes up for any of her shortcomings with some interesting powers. So let's start off with looking at her three teachable perks. All the Hag's teachable perks are Hex perks. What this means is that they are powered through a Hex totem. If any of these totems are destroyed, then you will no longer have that perk available for you for the rest of the trial. So let's start off with the third seal. The third seal applies the blindness status effect when you hit a survivor with a basic attack. This effect applies to the last two, three or four survivors hit, depending on which level you have the add-on. If you're wondering what the blindness effect does, it basically impairs all aura reading ability of the survivors, temporarily disable them until the survivor has cleansed that hex totem. Hex Ruin is the hag's next teachable, and unless you are extremely new to the game or been living under a rock for the last few years, then you will have come across this pair quite often. What this pair does is affects all survivors' generator repair progress when a generator is not worked on. If a survivor is progressing the generator and then leaves before it's completed, it will automatically start to regress the repair progress by 100, 150 or 200% of the normal progression speed. The last hag teachable is called Hex Devour Hope. When a survivor is rescued from a hook at least 24 meters away from you, then you will receive a Devour Hope token. What do these tokens do? Okay, so you gain two tokens, you will gain a 3, 4 or 5% speed boost, this normally lasts up to 10 seconds. Three tokens, a survivor will then suffer from the exposed status effect, so this basically means you can down them with one hit regardless of what health state they are in. If you are lucky enough to get it to five tokens, this is going to grant you the ability to kill survivors by your own hands, which basically means you can mori survivors regardless of how many times they have been hooked. The third seal can be a handy addition, however personally don't believe it's going to give you much of an advantage, especially when the survivors can destroy your totem. However, Ruin and Devour Hope are strong. In the right hand, you can cause serious damage to the survivors with these perks on. Ruin is going to help you with the gen progression, however, only if you are pushing the survivors off the gen by either bothering them whilst they are repairing or forcing them to come and rescue their teammates. Hex Devour Hope, again, once the survivor gets the alert that you've got that, they will go looking for that totem because you are going to be powerful by the time they realise. So you might be worrying because the RNG hates you and spawns your totems in the worst place and you will lose these perks quickly. Well, fear not because the Hag's powers will ensure you can protect these totems. Let's take a look at what a power does. Her power is called the Blackened Catalyst. So what does this do? When you press the power button, the Hag will bend down and draw a Phantasm Trap sign in that spot. The Hag has the ability to put 10 traps down. However, once you've placed them all, you can continue placing them more and these will just replace the older ones. This means you will always have visibility and you can't run out as once the survivor activates one anyway, you will gain that back in your inventory. So let's take a look at what these traps do. If a survivor sets off one of these traps by walking over them or within the area of effect, then the hag has the ability to teleport to that trap as long as it's located within a 40 meter range. If the survivor triggers a trap, then they will get a mud phantasm, which basically is the hag's character jumping from the ground and appearing before them. The trap does cause the survivor camera to pull towards it, so hopefully this will not only surprise them, but also disorientate them too. This allows you some time to either choose to teleport to the trap, or choose to ignore it. This gives plenty of opportunity for the mind games to begin, especially during chases, but we will come to that further in the video. A few things you should be aware of with the traps is that they only activate if the survivor walks or runs over the area, however, 
if the survivor is crouched and they can successfully pass without setting that trap off. Survivors also have their own counter to the traps and this is in the form of a flashlight. If a survivor is shining a flashlight then a trap will be revealed to them and will also destroy it. Okay, so we're going to look at how to play as a hag. So you know about her perks, you know about her powers, so how do you utilise it to be as efficient as possible with this killer? As I mentioned previously, there is so much strategy required with this killer to get the best out of it and a few things to avoid. So let's quickly run through some tips for playing as a hag. So my first tip is never chase. I can't stress this one enough guys and girls, a hag is 110% speed so chasing is not going to be a strong point. If you go on long chases without pushing survivors into a trapped area, then that is going to be a surefire way to displease the entity. How do I catch the survivors and hear you say? Well, you need to rely on your trap placements, which is my next tip. So trap placements. So you need to get a strategy together, and I've said this a few times now, but this is vital. If you don't have some sort of plan of attack, then you might struggle, and I, although this applies to most killers, it is vitally important to the hag. Think about the traps and their purpose. I want to close off a loop. I want to play some kind of games with windows and pallet. I want to trick survivors around jungle, gyms and T-walls. I would suggest you see what map you're on, then decide then what you would like to do, which leads us onto the starter trial, which we will discuss in a minute. I have seen lots of players hook a survivor, for example, and then decide to stick 10 traps around them. This is not very productive and is probably not going to help you at all. So if you want to trap a hooked survivor and quite honestly I don't know why you wouldn't because it's going to force the other survivors to crouch and this is going to eat up a valuable time but if you do want a trap put the trap a few steps away and off you go hunting the rest of the survivors one last point about trap placements and I see many hags do this as they try to trap the whole map this is going to be wishful thinking and not very efficient for a number of reasons Firstly, you have to remember that the standard teleport distance is 40 meters. You might have placed the best placed traps ever, however if you can't teleport to them then that's pretty much going to be redundant. Good survivors will also try to take you out of your network area, as you will see in the gameplay later, but these survivors had their safe area and one or two of them would try to entice me there. Don't fall for this type of bait unless you are certain you have won the game and confident to leave your area unattended. Which brings us on to the start of the trial. So you've seized the chasing, you know how to place these traps to get full advantage of them. Firstly, you need to start a trial and make a network of traps. Don't worry about chasing, don't worry about scattering the survivors off the gens just yet. You are very likely going to lose a gen or two whilst you're doing this, but be patient and don't panic. Your first stop should be to put enough traps down in some good locations, like I said, such as closing loops to ensure that survivors will regret coming to that area. I would highly recommend if you're playing a decent organised team and the gen start popping quickly, you might want to lock off part of the map that you can still keep with ideally 4 gens, in a perfect world 5 gens. That would be amazing. Around that you can control this including your network of traps. You will see in the gameplay I will show you a game where I was pretty much forced to split the map. That was down to the map we played but also because of my perks I could see I was probably wasting my time going to the top. Don't be afraid to do that, but try not to give up gens too easily. My next point is about remembering to keep resetting traps. If you were playing a game, it's easy to forget. You've had multiple traps go off whilst you're in chase or hooking, and you will end up with a high figure in your inventory. This is bad. You can find yourself reverting to chase and then struggling because the traps have gone. Try to remember to reset as much as possible and keep your available traps in a low number. This might mean you'll spend a little bit of time resetting your whole game, resetting your area, but make sure you keep that up because if you find yourself chasing with little traps placed then you are wasting time. Try to get the habit of looking and checking in the bottom because when you play good survivors they will do things like that. They will set off these traps whilst you're hunting their teammates to distract you, they are going to try to clear areas. You're going to get a lot of alerts going off and it's easy to lose track but you might have lost a number of traps so keep checking and resetting your play. There's a number of little tips that not many people are aware of that can come in handy when you're playing as a hag. When a phantasm is triggered then it will be facing the survivor so if you're planning on waiting to teleport or if it's nearby and you decide to walk there try to keep an eye on where that mud phantasm is looking to give you an idea of where that survivor is. Instant hits. If you see that the trap is going to catch a survivor in the open and it is in a certain direction then you can try to practice the instant hits. 
These hits need to be pulled off as soon as the trap is triggered and will give the survivor no chance in avoiding it due to the speed of the trap triggering it and you teleporting. This does take practice so don't be too frustrated if you don't always pull it off. I'm pretty sure on the gameplay you will see I didn't practice what I preached. However, try not to do this too often when a trap is near walls or pallets because I'm pretty sure I can blame the auto aim but the hits through my claws towards the wall and the structure rather than the survivors. We are going to discuss about add-ons in a minute and explain what they do, but they do change the hag's playstyle, some of them do anyway, so if you're one of those people that puts add-ons on because they look sexy or you have no idea what they do, then be careful because some of these are going to change the complete nature of the game style for the hag. So if you're unsure, we are going to speak about add-ons now. So, you've made it this far, so thank you for sticking around and hopefully you're on your way to becoming a good hag, but what about the add-ons? The add-ons listed above are pretty standard and have the effects that either reduce your trap setting time or increase the teleportation distance. I generally run with these to help me spread my network of traps out a little bit further because that will come in handy during the game. So as well as putting the traps down quicker, it's also going to allow you to teleport further. You then have these next add-ons which will increase the trap range. Now you might not be sure what that means but when you lay a trap you can actually see if you look closely the range of trap goes to to activate. As you can see from the above still picture. You then have the pussy willow catkins and the willow wreath and these will allow you to see the aura survivor when they set off a trap. Again if you knew these could be handy to include in your arsenal whilst you are getting used to the playstyle and will help you find survivors either after teleporting or tracking them down if you decide not to take the teleport. Then we come to some of the varying game style add-ons. First we have the scarred hand. This will take away the ability to teleport, however this will ensure your traps have a collision. So you can use the traps to block a survivor's path, for example in pallets and doorways. Next up we have Rusty Shackles which is a popular add-on because this will add to you being a stealth killer. Basically there's going to be no alert or mud phantasm appearing when a survivor triggers a trap. This is going to add a few jump scare elements into the Hags game. Grandma's Heart will decrease your terror radius to zero when a survivor trips a trap, however it will give your mud phantasm a 16 meter radius while it is in the trip stage. Disfigured Ears will deafen the survivors for 6 seconds so the survivor will not only have to put up with a disorientation by the camera movement, they won't also be able to hear anything. Then we have the two red add-ons, the waterlogged shoes. Running this add-on will ensure that survivors suffer from the hindered status effects. What this means is the survivors will have a temporary reduction to the movement speed. This add-on will also increase your movement speed, however it is going to remove your ability to teleport to trip traps. Finally we have the mint rag. This is a game changer of an add-on and it allows the hag to teleport to any trap on the map with a cooldown of 15 seconds so you don't have to wait for a trap to be tripped by a survivor. You can just choose and teleport to them at will. Okay in this part we normally speak about a recommended build. I am slowly evolving these guides and going off feedback from you guys and decided that rather than me giving you a build I would recommend perks instead. As you will see from my gameplay, the perks are all about how you play. When I play killer, I am all about information. I like to know what is happening around the map and think my builds reflect this when I'm playing. Friends I watch will have different play styles and maybe more defensive and maybe more aggressive and that means that any recommended build I give them won't really work with their play style. But I will still however recommend some perks that I believe really work well with the hag. Firstly I would recommend Nurse's Calling. This is a perk that allows you to see the aura of healing survivors so you have got them already wasting time healing but now you can see where they are and trap accordingly if they are nearby to get that second hit or injure them again. Make your choice as a strong perk on the hag. This perk will make anyone rescuing off the hook go into the exposed status for 40, 50 or 60 seconds. This is if they are at least 32 metres away from you during the unhook. You won't be surprised to hear this allows you to place a trap, leave the area, however if that trap triggers then you will be brought right back and allows you to one hit down the rescuer. Next up would be monitoring abuse. I think this is a good perk to have with the hag because she already has a reduced terror radius so you can reduce that even further which will allow you to sneak up the survivors giving them less time to react. 
Another perk I would recommend is called Hex Undying. This perk is in the middle of a rework. However, if you're going to run any of the hags teachable, then this is going to give them a little bit more protection. If a hex totem is cleansed, then this perk will take the hit first and deactivate it. However, it's going to leave your other hex totems free to continue working for a little bit longer, giving the survivors more things to do. Hex Ruin is a hag teachable perk and can be lethal with it, especially with the ability to trap near the totem, so giving you all the information and ability you need to keep this running for longer. If this is paired with Hex Undying, that is going to give you quite a bit of breathing space to make sure that you can concentrate on removing survivors off the gen and it's going to save time on kicking and regression. Next up would be Save the Best for Last, again a popular perk to have on the Hag. This allows you to gain tokens and recover from hits quicker once you've accumulated enough tokens. You gain the tokens by hitting anyone but your obsession. The reason this is quite powerful on Hag is that once you've gained enough tokens, your recovery from a hit will be much quicker, allowing your time to teleport during chases that little bit more quicker and efficient. The next perk we'd recommend is called Corrupt Intervention. It's a nice perk to play on Hag, especially if you are just playing and learning her style. The three furthest gens will be blocked off for a certain amount of time, and this will allow you to trap your area without the fears of losing gens too quickly in the early game. This is, however, going to push the survivors towards you as a look for gens, but the main thing is it's going to buy you some much needed time. Okay, and that is it now, guys and girls. So that is the end of the guide. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it, more importantly, useful. As always, if you did enjoy it, then please feel free to give it a like, drop me a comment. Sometimes you guys have great advice that I might have missed, so let me know in the comments below, and let's help out other new players out with tips that could help them become better with this killer. I will put the gameplay on now because I do generally get hate when I do guides without gameplays. Stick around and see how I get on as the hag. As I touched on earlier guys, I'm always looking to improve these guides as I go through all the killers. So for this gameplay video, I've decided to do the commentary after the game itself. So I can explain what I was thinking, why I did certain things instead of the live gameplay. As this might come in more handy I feel. If you would like me to do a certain guide then please feel free to comment and let me know or even suggest it in my discord server and I will go with the majority and make that next guide for you. Okay so I have rambled on a bit now but please guys stick around and enjoy the gameplay video. Alright so the game I loaded up on was the suffocation pit so this made it a bit easier for me. This map is split with a choke point in the middle so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to set my traps up, set my network of traps. So what I will be thinking now is putting the traps where I think the survivors might try to travel. Now I'm pretty sure at this minute that everybody is over the other side. I like this trap because I don't have time to react when they go through the window. Right, that's a skill check missed I believe. Right, I was just checking the sound of that generator, the far one. Okay, so this is a choke point, and I'm going to put a few traps here, just in case I get some alerts that the survivors are heading over. Right, so I can hear this gen's being done, so I'm going to place this here in case she tries to loop me around. And she's quickly dashed off, not sure where she's went. However, this is a bit of an obvious trap, but we'll still put it down. Can't see where she's went, so Tinker has gone off, so I've lost my terror radius at least. Again, traps near the window, because they don't have time to react, and this generally if they try to go back in, they'll slow vault. Right, Discordance gone off, but I'm happy with the setup now. So yes, I am going to lose two gens. I've been quite lucky that there's actually, oh, hello, there's actually four gens over this side, so... That's quite good. So there's one gen gone. Tinker has gone off again. Oh, right. Okay, get the hit there. I'm going to get her down here, so I'm not going to take a teleport. See, so she's going to try to go back and get the hit there. I am surprised that this one goes, even though Tinker had gone off. Because I didn't realise there was anybody near there. And I was going by. I never went over and checked, but I was listening. So, I know the survivor's over here, I've just seen her. So, I know she's somewhere around here. So, I don't want to waste too much time looking. So, what I'm going to do, place a trap and hope 
Ah, uh, there. I say no. I say no. Right, so get the hit there. Now, if you look at my traps, I'm hoping to catch her on the way out as well. So, I think most of the survivors are going to run back over. I didn't reset the trap there, so that was a mistake from my behalf. And it's going off. All the alerts. So, we've got Tinkerer. So, I'm going to lose a third gen. Uh, oh, that took me a bit by surprise, but I want that there. Yeah, I thought I was uh, teleporting to that one there. Right, so I get the hit. Hopefully, I end this chase quickly. That's my thinking, and he's going exactly where I want him to. No time to react, can't go through the window, get the hit there. Unfortunately, I have lost three gens, and they've gone pretty quickly. So, he goes on the hook, trap around there. Now, I'm quite happy with the setup I've got here, but I have got five traps left. So, I'm going to put traps, and know some of the survivors are going to know these are there. Oh, didn't mean to take that one at the time, but... We get, oh, she got dead. I didn't realize off the first chase. Right. So she goes down here. Now I am conscious. I'm worried about DS, so I'm not going to go and pick her up yet. Instead, I'm going to trap. This is again just for the outside. Right. When I say the outside, I mean for them running back over. Get the hit there. Now I'm going to trap this and leave her. Right. Oh, I didn't react quick enough. Okay, will she jump through that window one? No, but I think I can get her on the river. Oh, I didn't press. That was a mistake by me. The lunge just didn't work. But you know what? I am happy to break these pallets because I want this whole area to be a dead zone. This is what I mean about strategy, guys, when you're using the hag. Right. I think I can get her down here. Claudette's just ran off the other way. Um... Like I said, I don't recommend chasing with her, but this is a chase that I'm going to get something out of. So, normally I would probably put a trap on one side, but I didn't want it to really go too far. So, pick her up. Get her hooked. And if you look now, I've got seven traps. Now, this is what I mean about time to reset. I'm not worried about the other survivors. And as I say, I know I'm going to lose that fire gen up the top. Uh, if I was them personally, I would, as a survivor, definitely try to stay around here to get one done. But the traps are scaring them. They know this area is heavily trapped. Window again. This is hoping to catch them on the way out rather than the way in. Hence why I missed the first hit with, uh, was a kit. Right. I want a trap here as well. So we've got people. Hopefully getting caught on the way out. Right, that was obvious. That was that generator being done. Okay, the save was made. He fell back there because of a trap, a trap and I got the hit there. On the trap he goes. All right, so we'll trap round. Again, I'm looking down. Two traps left. That's fine by me. We'll put one here because this is the one that got him in the end. Lost that gen, so they are going to have to come down here now. Probably placing that one a bit close to nobody, but I do want to... Right, they're healing up, so that's fine. I can see them there, so I'm going to place a trap on this choke point. I am recycling, so I'm hoping I'm not losing a good trap. And there's someone there coming to my left. Right, so i got the hit there. And she'll go scur scurrying back over to her safe zone. These guys know that other, other part safe. I'm not venturing down there until I'm confident I can win the game. Right, there's the save done. Get the hit there on her. Right, I'm going to leave him. He's going to set that trap off. I'll leave him and I'll go after Claudette instead. Oh, Claudette, you got me there. All right, and I should get the hit here. Yeah, bit unfortunate for her there, but she uh, put her pal down too late. Right, we'll get her hooked up. Where the hell's she gone? Okay. And that is, yeah, that was a hook sabotage. So on she goes. Trap around her. Clever play by them because that hook was deep, deep in the mires, let's say. That was uh, quite a tricky one for them to get out of. Right, I finally get to use pop. Put a trap down here again, obvious. Don't mind that, right? Let's get a hit on the Meg. So 
So hit there. Again, she'll go run enough. Um, a trap did go off there. I think that was to my left. But I'm, I'm liking the traps in this area. So if you look around right. So to Kate to get the hit on her. Now, I am going to try to push her the other way. You, oh, So she's ran straight off. I wanted to turn her the other way. So hence why I have a path and took that way. I forgot that this guy had sprint burst. But again, I'm going to put traps down. There we go. And that's going to mean I get the hit on him. He's got to come in for the save. This is a mistake by me. I should have took the teleport. But I thought I'd hit him and I accidentally hit Claudette. So I didn't register. But he's going to fall for that trap. So get the hit. Get him down. And let's get him on a hook. And I'm going to reset this time. On the hook you go. Right. I didn't realise he was dead on the hook. But it's a no point trapping it. Again, them guys are, are resetting themselves, they're healing. And there they are, I can see them straight up there. Can't remember what I do, I actually do. Uh, yeah, I go and bother them. I'm comfortable with the perks I've got on. Now, the whole idea here, I'm not chasing to try to catch them. I'm chasing to try to squeeze them into other areas. So let's see where they go. So she's going to go into the shack, not even bothering with that. Claudette's still there. Now, if I can get Claudette into that zone where all the traps are, because there's no traps around here. I've got one. I'll take that hit. There we go. So she's going to my area. Let's see if she goes right in. And that is the only reason. If there's still four survivors left, if we're all... I don't know. I found a trap there. Um, if there's still four survivors left, I wouldn't have went up there. Right. Okay, yeah, so I can see which generator they're on. Sorry, I took my other screen there a second. So she sprinted past me there. I, I get the hit here. I get the hit, and hopefully I can get a follow-up hit. See which way she goes. Yeah, down you go. Right, now Thrillin's going to let me know if anyone's still on there, but there isn't. Uh, that is broken, so I'm going to put her over here. Now, that is my traps going off again. So, I know they're sneaking around the side there. Too far for me and too late for me to, to teleport. But we'll trap her. Like I said, we don't want to put 10 or ten traps around her. One is sufficient, guys. Let's see. Someone's around here. Let's see the scratch marks there. I'm going to try to catch them by surprise. We'll put that on. See if we can chase around that way. Is she going to go off? Right, the rescue's been made. So, I should get the hit here. Whoops. I'm a donut. Right, and I've lost it completely. So, I'm not going to chase. I'm conscious when I was re-watching the guide, guys. I did put don't chase. Um, I don't want to be t that to be taken literally. You know, what I mean is don't go on prolonged chases. So, she's going out my network. The last girl got a hit there. Um, so yeah, I want to concentrate on these people. Right, I didn't. Okay, so she's run around. Let's put that there. And here she comes. Right, confused the life out of her. Okay, we'll get her hooked. Now, Discordance has gone off, so I know where the other two are now. I do feel sorry for these guys. It is very tricky when you get in that situation, but you've got to make sure you try not to cheat three gen yourself. I don't know how I missed her there. There's the other person coming the other way. I'm going to use Pop. I'm quite confident she's not going to get the save. Yeah, she's trying to distract me. Get the hit on the Meg. I think it's a Meg. Right, she's still around here. So I'm having a little think. And I decide to trap here. Alright, so I'm sort of closing off the area. So I'm going to come around here to push around. This gives me the hit. She doesn't want to go back there, but now she's got no choice. And down she goes. On you go. And dead right. So, hmm. Okay, I'm going to move the traps now. So what I've done is I know they're expecting it further down. So I've moved it up. So somewhere I haven't placed it before. 
Now, I am a bit worried there's been a bit of time about keys, but she's round here. So oh, that was misplayed by me. Right. I'm not taking any of these teleports, but you can see the camera, her head moving towards it. Right, I need, to, he, need her to run the other way here, but she's gone straight up. And you know what? I don't mind entertaining this chase now. Going to be very difficult, but she's in a bit of a dead zone. And she makes it easy when I do stuff. Stuff like that, but I get the hit here. Get her down, get her up. Right, trap here. And I think I will put a trap in this entrance here. Now, I want to head back down here. I'm a bit worried that the other survivor might be. Doing... Oh, scratch mark. So I think the other survivor's going for the trap door. So let's head round. Remember it being here, and here she is. So give her a hit there. And you know what, guys? I'm going to be nice. Let her escape. She's getting some healing points. So, yeah. So that was that with the video, guys. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how it plays. I guess there was some misplays on there. We are all human after all. Ruthless killer. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed, guys. If you did, please like the video. Give it a share. If you haven't already done so and you do enjoy my content, press that subscribe button, drop a comment, let me know which killer I should do next. And hopefully you all enjoy the rest of your night. And thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye.